Hello and welcome in to Stomp the Bus podcast. My name is Mark Harris. I am your host for this episode. And Colton, we got our guy. ASU has a new head coach by the name of Kenny Dillingham. And looks like we didn't screw up this hire. No, it looks it looks very good. First of all, pleasure to be back. Uh, fresh off of a two-week bender, according to the comment section. Uh, but excited to be back with you, Mark. And, and let me just make it clear, you're the host of every episode. Um, so just keep that in mind moving forward. But I think, you know, you just misspoke. It happens to the best of us. Um, you've been doing this show long enough, Mark. It's, it begins to wear on you. But, um, yeah, great hire, one that I'm very excited by. And it seems like um, just based on some of the early moves that Dillingham has made, he's trying to surround himself with um, not only people that he trusts, but people who are going to share the same vision that he's going to try to, whatever that vision is, I mean, uh, that we're not entirely sure on. We can speculate everything like that. But at the very least, he's trying to bring guys in here who are going to help him create what he wants to create, which is a good sign. Oh, yeah, 100 um, percent. And I mean, for me, it's the thing that we've been talking about. He addresses a lot of the key themes that we've complained about. Uh, Kenny Dillingham is like he is a product of the recent versions of college football. You know, this is someone who totally understands the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. He is an op like offensive mind about, you know, and th the thing with these young offensive type coaches is they attract other people, other transfers to go play with them because they want to be in that offense, you know? Yeah. And I like that um, he's been all over the place too. He's been in a yeah. lot of different uh, conferences. He's worked in a lot of different situations, probably familiar with, various recruiting landscapes around the country um and i think that's what excites me the most you talked about it a guy who's familiar with the modern landscape which asu seems to be finally heading into I yeah mean, they, they did it kicking and screaming they didn't want any part of it they wanted to develop players but now it seems that they're acknowledging this is a different time right and we need a guy who's going to be able to navigate that landscape and it seems like Dillingham is going to be that guy and he's going to be surrounded by um guys who one of those guys being Sean Iguano he is going to be retained yep. which cool which um, I love yeah he is going to be retained which will definitely help with that local recruiting aspect but it, it really seems like not only are they going to try to revamp their efforts from a local recruiting perspective but they're really going to emphasize this transfer portal which could lead to not a massive turnaround, but a faster turnaround than maybe we're anticipating. All oh, 100%. Well, yeah. if, if, if you – here's the thing. Like, all these quarterbacks out there, like, they want to start. And if, if, you're, if you're a quarterback on a bench somewhere, you know, like, you're looking at Trenton Bourget and ASU, like, you're thinking, I can beat them, you know. Right. And maybe Bourget beats them out, you know. But – Whatever it's it's still good to have more talented quarterbacks, obviously. But the the thing with Dillingham is he emphasized in his press conference. I was listening to uh, I think it was Perkins and Gambo on the radio, and apparently they said that uh, they said that Dillingham used the word relationship thirteen times in his press conference. And for anyone who hasn't seen the press conference, it, he like he's clearly like very passionate about this job. I'll just say yeah. that. Um, and that comes – that's such a big deal in the transfer portal because then – especially with Dillingham because he's recruited guys to Oregon. Mm -hmm. Suddenly there's an Oregon wide receiver, Oregon running back in the transfer portal. He's recruited guys to Florida State, recruited guys at Auburn recently, like guys who are still in college. And so yeah. or been, that's where been, it's like – even been in on recruits who didn't necessarily choose his program. Yeah. Been, he he was a very prominent recruiter at all of those stops. He's been in conversations with these guys. And even if these guys decided like, this isn't the option for me, they still have a level of familiarity with Dillingham that will at least warrant a little more conversation than ASU might, has war might have uh, warranted in the past. Right. And especially yeah. if you're looking at offensive, offensive transfers. 
playing for a coach who is going to elevate you, especially in the latter years of your collegiate career, yes. is something that they might really emphasize. They're not, I mean, it, it, the years of like, I have to sit out for a season before I can come, but these are like immediate decisions that can reap immediate benefits for not only the player, but the program too. Yeah. It's like Dillingham is a guy that you said it, he said relationships 13 times, but he has all of these connections, not only with coaches, but former recruits. Um, and that could lead to some very interesting personnel developments um, when this starts to open up. I think the transfer portal, um, the, the, it officially, the transfer portal officially opens December 5th. Mm -hmm. But in recent days, you've seen a lot of, at least for me, a lot of tweets of so-and-so is planning to enter the transfer portal or so-and-so is going to enter the transfer portal. And so far, so far, and we are recording this on uh, Wednesday night, November 30th, the only ASU player who has been reported to be going into the transfer portal in the future has been third-string quarterback Paul Tyson. Yes. And I understand that because – He's thinking, okay, someone's – they're going to keep Borgay probably and they're going to recruit someone in and like – and maybe Paul Tyson who, – who knows? Maybe he just wants to play somewhere and he's like, I'll, I'll, I'll play it in the FCS or whatever it is, you know. So um, that's not like the most unexpected transfer, but it'll be very interesting to see – because more, more ASU players will transfer – yeah, it's It'll November thirtieth. We've got what, like four days left until the deadline. Um, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of very difficult decisions being weighed. Uh, three days, I guess. Well, hold on. Is it a deadline or is it the is it a window of opening? That is a good question. We should look into that. Our producer didn't figure that out before. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking that up right now. Okay. Okay. Cool. Regardless, um, we should start to see some of those moves. I thought it was a deadline, but I could be completely wrong. I've been wrong on these things before. I'm not batting a thousand. What is it? Did you find it? <laughs> okay. This is from 24 7 Sports. Most pressing is the newly interested chant for Windows. D -d -d -d. Now, FBS players are limited to December 5th to January 18th to enter the portal. Before another window opens up April 15th to 30th. So basically, they're giving players end of the – yeah, okay, so this this published 12 hours ago. Good. Okay. So basically, they're giving players uh, like two weeks – like after the season, hey, what's going on? You're getting a new coach. <coughs> right. So the deadline well, you know, would be January 18th then. Yep. And then, okay. and then after spring ball as well. So okay. It's like – well, then, I mean, that's why, obviously, when you know, when you get your guy and you know who you want your guy to be, you don't hesitate with the hire. But I think that there's another layer to this where now Dillingham can get in, try to build his staff, try to assemble guys um, that can start to have these conversations and try to keep some of these players here. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of those conversations in the next couple of weeks. So it's going to be... Um, I mean, January 18th is the day to circle. Anybody who's on this roster past January 18th is going to be, at the very least, participating in spring ball and doing all of that stuff, yeah. right? So um, January 18th, I guess, is the date to circle. And, um, I mean, the season just ended. We're already getting – I mean, it's just going to be massive news after massive news, I think, in terms of personnel on this team for the next couple of weeks. Oh, 100%. So 100 and it'll be as in it'll be interesting to see. Like I, I saw I, I addressed this on the last show. Um, it was I think last week, last Wednesday, uh, Omar Norman Lott, defensive lineman. He tweeted like it's been real Sun Devil Nation, which implies he's going to transfer, um, which if players transfer. There's no you know, it is what it is. Right. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if, like, if there is a group of players who transfer, is it like, do the offensive players stay? Do the are the offensive players like? Oh, because I feel like bringing in Dillingham. If you're Elijah Badger, it's like, okay, I could leave, and he would probably get. Well, the the thing we don't know about this is how much 
the NIL has actually improved um, mm -hmm. because we don't, I, we just don't know the, and the, the NIL dynamics behind this, right? In the short term, right? I mean, obviously. Yeah. I well, I mean, I guess in, in, in the short term, there was that guy at the freaking press conference who said he would donate a million dollars to the, uh, to the collective. Did you see that? I did not see that. A guy like just stood up. Yeah. Uh, Apparently it's this, his name's Nap Lawrence, which is an interesting name. Um, interesting. But yeah, I mean, that's what this hire was kind of supposed to do, right? It was revitalize this community of boosters, revitalize all of the donors heading into this new era. Um, and I mean, that's obviously if somebody's standing up at a press conference to pledge a million dollars, they're pretty, I mean, fired it's up. Good, over it's it. a good sign. Yeah. Even if it's performative. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, the good thing about the transfer portal too, right, is we just talked about all of the guys that Kenny Dillingham could have potentially talked to along the way. We talked about all of the stops that he's had. Um, while there's guys going out, there could be guys coming in. The transfer portal offers that sort 100%. of fix to all of these to all of these subtractions. So it may seem kind of detrimental when you see these names that in the scope of this season look like huge names. Who knows who's going to be coming in, right? Um, obviously, that's entirely speculative. Um, maybe we're just thinking Dillingham hold, Dillingham's name holds way more weight than it does. Um, but I don't see why it wouldn't at least give recruits or transfers a, a, an opportunity to – or a reason to look a little harder at ASU. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think we're overhyping the Dillingham recruiting stuff. I, I, it, because he, like you said, he's been in so many places and he's been right. such an aggressive recruiter. And he's also been at places that care about like recruiting too. That's the other thing. Like, yeah. it's not like he's been at uh, Wake Forest and uh, Indiana and uh, Oregon State. You know, he's been at, he's been at, was at Oregon last year, helped land. If you guys look up Dante Moore, he's out of Detroit, one of the best quarterback prospects, going to Oregon because of Kenny Dillingham. Um, right. And then, I mean, Florida and State. I mean, heck, we can dream and maybe go to ASU. I don't see that happening. but no. uh, we, That's that's what we might need to pump the brakes on is we're not going to see, like, a flood of four no. five-star recruits who committed to Oregon. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. I don't think anybody's saying that. But you might get a couple guys who – right. Who look at but the opportunity. In terms of his background at the schools he's been at, he's been at Oregon, like I just said, uh, Florida State and Auburn. <laughs> like yeah. those are places that are like more insane than AU's ASU will ever like in terms of their fan base will ever be about uh like recruiting and all that stuff, you know. Right, and in uh, very, very different but prominent parts of the country when it comes to college football. Yeah, yeah. You know, the West Coast, the the South, and then, well, I guess Florida's the South. But this Florida seems to be like its own hotbed, right? Right. All this stuff. So uh, being at those places. Well, in three different conferences, too. Yeah, exactly. Reason, yeah. He's, he's got that diversified background with all of these different places, and um, that's only going to help. And, and all that time also, at Memphis, too, you know. Right, right. It's also the fact that this guy thinks this is, like, his dream job. You yes, know? yes. So that's, that's foundational and, like, he's not going to jump ship for another opportunity. This was, like, the one that he was always aiming for, it seems like. Well, and here's the other thing. Like, I've I've been doing some just, like, reading, what, like just in, in consuming content about Dillingham, and you've heard people, like – bring it up that like, oh yeah, Arizona State was his dream job. Like from year, like he was saying this years ago, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to think that like, what if we just happened to, like what if the next like super offensive wonderkind, you know, head coach, I'm, I'm not like, I'm not gonna name like, like I'm not gonna say, like, oh, he's the next Lincoln Riley or he's the next Sean McVay. Like I'm not trying to do that. Like that's totally unfair. And don't you but, dare throw Chip Kelly's name into this. I didn't say Chip Kelly. No, I, you were trending that way. You said, oh. yeah, I, I got nervous. Oh, okay, well, if we got Chip Kelly's Oregon, yeah. <laughs> Oregon tenure out of Kenny Dillingham. Don't you dare put that on Kenny Dillingham. 
if we got the Chip Kelly Oregon, but any what I'm saying, but anyway, my point is like, what if he's just this in, very good offensive mind and seems to be a fairly good leader too? Like good people seem to like him as well. This guy who just maybe he would have been a head coach years down the road somewhere else, but he just happened to grow up in Arizona and be an ASU fan. Right. You know? It would be like the stars aligning unlike they ever have for ASU. <laughs> like it, it just seems in a like, while at least. Like right, but like yeah. I mean ASU has had some success in the past and obviously the we've talked but recently, like nothing yeah. has gone right. It seems like everything one step forward was always followed by three steps back. And you just said, like, what are the odds that this guy who could be the next bright offensive mind just so happened to go to high school here and grow up around this sort of dynamic? Well, and, and the other thing is, in terms of his age, he got injured, like, going into his senior year. So that's another just random life event that changed his life because that's when he started coaching. Yeah, it just seems like one of those moments where it's like, okay, this could be a massive break for ASU yeah. when it comes to getting this program back on track. And I mean, you hear it all the time. ASU is kind of like this sleeping giant, right? Or like this 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 Pac-12 sort of perennial contender that just has never gotten to that point. The potential is there for ASU to be that perennial contender in the Pac-12, and they've never lived up to that villain, even in right. years when they're supposed to contend. And, and this seems like we, we could finally be trending toward that. But We'll see. Yeah, I don't want to – I mean, I guess it w might be easier to do that, like, in the future with U UCLA and USC gone, but maybe – we still don't know if the Pac-12 is going to stay together for sure. It looks like it will. That's, but That's true. That completely yeah. slipped my mind, the fact that the Pac-12 is – still in flux so there's right. so many players to this but 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 here's the good thing about all that is like i don't think dillingham doesn't care like he wouldn't care if asu went to the big 12 and yeah I, he would probably rather asu be in the pac 12 just because it it's just been that way before and more stability but um he wouldn't care he, he i mean he clearly doesn't he clearly is like accepting of the sanctions that are coming you know he's aware yeah he yeah knows coming so that's what it, it seems like he's a young guy he's aware of you know what it entails to coach at this school he's done it before yep <laughs> and yeah. uh, he you know he's aware of these sanctions that are coming down it's he's going to ride it out with asu he's not going to jump ship this isn't like a stopgap job for him where he's trying to sort of boost his resume get his feet wet somewhere else and right. maybe take a bigger job like this is the job for him which is also if he does leave in like five years after two 10 win seasons, that's still pretty good for ASU and in, in, in the big picture, you know? Yeah. But let's, I mean, but who knows if that even happens? Yeah. Yeah. Mark, don't, don't put that out into the, the universe. What's wrong with you? Just, okay. <laughs> Just blankly staring at me. I mean, whatever, yeah. like that's not going to happen. Okay. Good job, Mark. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it's just it, it just feel it feels good that ASU just it, listened to the fans and just kind of made the hire that just makes sense. Like, there's a downside to it, sure, but I feel like the only downside to it is that is people say, "Oh, well, he's young." Like that's that's like where it like starts. I'm like, okay, like. If that's what you have to go to, I don't know how much of a downside that is, to especially me, since like no one's really expecting anything early on, and so he'll yeah. get he's he's going to get a long leash because the program's in the toilet right now, and there's sanctions, and he's young, so he can make his mistakes. In I don't see what's wrong with somebody that has early on. I, I don't see what's wrong with somebody that has the potential that Dillingham has, growing into a job. Right. There is a level of like, okay, maybe he's not as qualified as the 65 year old over there that's been coaching for 40 years and whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like hypothetical, the, the prototypical guy that it seems like every college program tries to hire. Um, it, 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 like, what's wrong with letting a guy grow into a job? 
you know, and this, this right. could be, this could be the perfect opportunity for him to do that. Especially like you said, the immediate results aren't going to be expected. I mean, we might, I, maybe I'm too optimistic about this hire. The bar is set extremely low after this season, but I think you're going to see signs of a turnaround. Not that that's going to be very difficult again after three wins. And I think right. you're going to see signs of this turnaround way earlier than anticipated just based on kind of what we've seen from Dillingham everywhere that he's been so far, and especially after the job he did at Oregon this season. So, yeah. Well, I mean, it, would it be impossible for them to win six games next year? You know, like, no, but I don't even think like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I will have to look at the schedule, but I mean, there's so, yeah, so yeah that's yeah. true. You got to look at who they're playing, but Six games shouldn't be out of the question. It's hard no. to say right now because we have no idea what this roster is going to look like. Yeah, and, and that's – when I say that, I'm anticipating some transfers in. Um, transfers in, transfers out. Right. The right. roster is going to look a little different depending on who they land to play quarterback too. I, I don't think – I mean, Trenton Bourget had his moments this year, but I don't think they're just yeah. going to be okay with just Bourget being the guy. Um. Somebody yeah. should come in who has the potential to take this job. Um, you know, I and I don't know. It's hard to say because you got to see kind of who comes in and everything, what happens at quarterback, what happens with the defense, all of these things. I've heard – well, not heard, but just like <laughs> – it was very dis- – not heard. Like, I don't – again, you have no sources? one has any contacts. But I've just see, like, uh, seen on Twitter A.J. Duffy at Florida State. He's a backup quarterback. He uh, ASU was recruiting him a while back, but when Dillingham was at Florida State, he got him to FSU. So, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully we can we could get someone like that, or who knows with the court. I mean, I feel like there's so many options in terms of quarterback, and uh, I mean, Jalen Strong tweeted something along the lines of like Sun Devil fans, like watch, like look out because I've had you know, four and five star players reach out to me in terms of want, interested in Dillingham. And uh, I have like, there's multiple players that are interested, yada, yada. So it's like, oh man, like. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, it's, you know, it's crazy is i just looked up AJ Duffy at Florida state four star, <laughs> um, a highly touted prospect and his scouting report done on January 2nd. Um, compares him to Bo Nix, <laughs> hey, which is extremely, extremely interesting considering what uh, Dillingham just did with Bo. I Nix. would not hate that. That that could be a name to watch right there, definitely. Well, and Dillingham's had some success with running quarterbacks, so but he's had success with like pocket guys too, you know, because I think. Like Brady White in Memphis, he was mainly a pocket guy. So that's the good thing about him. It's just having an offensive mind is just so – especially for ASU. Like, again, I, I've mentioned, like, you have to be an exciting team. And, and Dillingham gets that. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. I think that would be that, – see, but that's the element, right? We just mentioned a guy at Florida State who Dillingham has had that connection with and Dillingham helped recruit and ASU was even in on during his recruit. Like there's, it, it just seems like everything is so intertwined with yeah Dillingham. Everything is, I don't know. It, it's crazy how this works. Um, but yeah, obviously we have AJ Duffy hasn't even really mentioned that he's going to transfer or anything like that. So who knows, but um, th- that's an interesting name. Definitely. Yeah. Um, well, the other thing about this hire is that the thing with college football now with like the transfer portal and NIL and all just, just these new things that have entered the game in the past like five years, it's so much more like tailored to be like a young man's game in terms of the coaching, you know, because it's just like, you just need more energy to be able to keep up with all that stuff, especially as a head coach. Right. Exactly. Uh, And I mean, especially going into this new era where it's like, there's so many new layers to this whole recruiting dynamic that 
um, coaches are going to have to be up for. So it, again, we keep talking about this, but it seems like he checks every single box for a modern, well, I guess there's some in terms of like bringing players in, he checks a lot of the boxes for a modern college football coach, which is really good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm just excited. I'm excited that like there's a possibility of just good little news nuggets about ASU, you know? Yeah, I think they're definitely been a while. Be definitely going to be relevant in the next couple of days. And it's not going to be for people who are just leaving. It's going to be interesting yeah. to see who, who comes in for a change, which will be cool. Yeah. It's. And and we've uh, added some assistant coaches. Um, he hi Dillingham hired his former high school head coach, Charlie Ragel, and he's a bit apparently, you know, he's been coaching like, he's been like a special teams coach in the Pac-12 before, um, Arizona guy, and so has you know, a lot of the Arizona high school people like him, um, and uh, he was the head coach at Idaho State. And they got him down here to be the special team slash tight end coach. And then hire another guy, uh, Vince Amy. He was on the uh, he was actually on the 96 team. Um, played in the NFL. So it's good to. Yeah, defensive line coach. It's good to have, you know, guys like this with the program and Apparently, all these guys are just like, you know, really like Arizona and stuff. And maybe I'm just, you know, you know reading no, into it a little too much. But no, that's what I was talking about, though, too, is guys who are like familiar with what this job entails, yeah. but also understand like the modern landscape of college football. That seems to be the, the recurring theme with this staff that he's filling out. So, again, like nothing that has happened in the last couple of days has been like cause for concern. It's all been extremely yes. positive and exactly what you want to see um so so that's good i don't know do you know who even i guess this is like really in the weeds but who was involved in making the hire like it, it was yeah it so i saw that they hired like a i saw that they hired like a search firm okay but i don't think that when i like when i think when they hired those it's not like you handle everything it's like hey can you check out a few things about his past, yada, yada. Um, right. And I, th I feel like this was too much of a layup to, like, fumble. Well, yeah, and I, I – it feels like Ray Anderson was not the sole, like, he was not heading this, you know. He may have been involved, but it was not his final call, it feels like. So. Right, exactly. I mean, in, in, in the press conference, Dillingham's like, we are, he made this symbol too. He goes down with his hand, like, every, we, there is alignment. Like, all right, like, that's good. Um, so, yeah, that, I, I, I feel like we're not going to know, like, the full detail. Well, I mean, maybe there's been stuff written about it, but I feel like we're not going to know, like, the full details of, like, because it feels like it was the boosters who kind of initiated this and, like, Seemed like, hey, like we should do this, like, and it seemed, and it seemed like that's the other thing. It seemed like a lot of the boosters are very on board with this. Yeah, I mean, talk about the guy at the presser and everything too. But getting the boosters back on board was going to be a huge, a huge task for this whole this whole search, right? You wanted to hire a guy that yes. excited that group because yes. I feel like that group has just been so disappointed for so long um, yep. with everything that happened. So getting them back on board is good. Getting um, building a staff of people you trust who share your vision is also good. Uh, becoming relevant in the transfer portal, not just for guys who are leaving in terms right. of other programs, just vulturing your guys, but actually being able to bring some guys in also good. Um, I mean, not that we didn't in the past, obviously, X Validate transferred in, and that they've had some success, but at a more prominent level right yeah 100 so 100 that's uh that's good everything i feel like the arrow is pointing up on all of these like really overarching crucial areas for asu yeah we feel i mean it i, I just hope that the if there is sanctions it doesn't like rain on the parade it, it's not like who knows how how much it'll be effective i'm 
if there are sanctions, I'm just less worried about it, like completely derailing everything just because, well, A, it wasn't him that it wasn't anyone on staff that did it. So that's one thing. And it just feels like the NCAA just has so much less power anyway. So who, who knows? I'm not going to talk like the sanctions are going to come and we just have to deal with them, I guess, you know. Right. But I think also in this era of transfer portal, how like that kind of gives the staff an opportunity to sort of weather the storm while these sanctions are in effect. Yep. Right. So yep. I don't know what they, what they could even be. Right. But usually it's like a loss of scholarships, bowl and eligibility, whatever it is. Right. Um, in, in an era with, the transfer portal, you could kind of bandage up what's the, the program while you're weathering that storm, while you're kind of hitting the reset button with the recruits who, you know, don't want to commit to a program that's, you know, has all these sanctions or whatever it is. So that's that's also a benefit with these potential sanctions coming down. Yeah, 100 percent. And Dillingham. um I checked out his Twitter. <laughs> In terms, I think he's just he he loves a- ASU and loves selling ASU. His Twitter profile, like his header, not his profile picture, is just a uh, screenshot of like the weather report where it says seventy two degrees sunny in Tempe. <laughs> See, he's already he's already recruiting. That's, I'm just like this it. is this yeah he has it on Twitter. Just just another day dot. A bunch of dots. Hashtag activate the valley. Hashtag quality of life. Hashtag at all. <laughs> but this is like this is the recruit. It's like I wish we saw more ASU coaches just kind of do this stuff. But um, I, the thing that I I, I kind of hope that Dillingham becomes someone who's like a like all the other fan bases hate him, you know, because he'll like just. He'll be like a mini Lane Kiffin or something like that, you know? Yeah. That would that be, would be that awesome. Would be that would be awesome, definitely. I agree with you there. I'm reading through this article on uh, the sanctions and the investigation and everything, and it's just like, I don't know. It's too much to try to, like, comb through right now. But right. It, how long can this possibly take, right? These sanctions That's the other, it's taking be, so long. It's taking so long. What they did and have, we don't even know how much power anybody? the NCAA has. Right. Like, who is still on the staff that violated those or, like, was a part of the violations, right? Right. Well, Ray Anderson's still in the athletic department as of right now. That's true. But I'm talking, like, Herm's gone. Zach Zach Hill is gone. Uh, Dave – why am I blanking on his name? Coach on the Raiders now. Giants linebacker. Antonio Pierce. Antonio Pierce. Pierce. He's gone. Like, all of these guys are gone. So, it's like, who are you even punishing? <laughs> you know? Oh, like, I, of course. it's No, it's dumb even if it – yeah. Yeah. It's, that's it's ridiculous. Hopefully, there's some resolution with that soon so we can stop talking about it. It's honestly become, like, just a minor little detail in the back of my mind that has, like, huge implications. And I wish it yep. didn't. Like, I wish this could just – be resolved so that there's some there's some resolution and they can move forward but i mean right. who knows well you know it, the good thing about this is like they're recruiting arizona like they're recruiting i mean on the first day of the job he literally sets up like a call like a few hours after his press conference being like hey let's let's talk i'm doing him nice to meet you to all the arizona coaches you know like right. initiative it's just showing initiative the last staff, it was just a disaster in Arizona. Whatever method they were doing, I mean, there were years we got one guy. Like, how is that even possible? <laughs> That's insane. And I get that, like, ASU doesn't have the grip on, like, the state of Arizona that, like, Ohio State does on Ohio or whatever. But still, it's like you get, like, a at least, like, four guys from Arizona per recruiting class, you know? So, and look, it's like if if there, I wasn't complaining too much when we weren't recruiting Arizona and we got a bunch of four stars from California and elsewhere, but clearly that was just, I mean, if, if Dillingham does that great, but it's good that he's focusing on Arizona. 
Yeah. No, I just I was reading a Jordan Simone tweet about I'm what is it? I'm fighting for one more year of eligibility <laughs> for Kenny Dillingham. Just yeah, I don't know. I'm now you got me on his Twitter, so I'm falling down this rabbit hole. <laughs> it's it's good stuff, man. I really like this guy. I'm excited to see uh, what he does. It, it, it's been what three days since the hire was announced. It was a, announced on Friday. Sunday. I thought it was Saturday. 